Hello, this is David Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. And of course, what I talk about here isn't found anywhere on the internet, so you want to go down below and hit subscribe and the little bell next to it, and you'll be sent an email or a message saying, hey, we've got a new video. And we're gonna, we talk about all kinds of things, including things that are in the news. And of course, here's something that's in the news. A new form of light could power next-gen quantum computers. Now, I am a critical thinker. I've been around them for over 20 years, well over 20 years, and have talked and discussed and seen papers and read papers and read books about how mainstream science is really screwed up. So I've been through that phase, and I've also been around these people long enough that we all start looking at the problems and saying, let's solve these problems. Let's get rid of the paradoxes and the illogical parts. What do we have left? What kind of new ideas can we put together? And we now have many people with very good models, very new ideas. My father and I have our model, and it works quite well, and it's very simple. It's all Newtonian and physical. That's our idea. We're going to push that as far as we can. So I wanted to give you an idea of how David D. Hilster, or my father in this case, would look at an article like this as a critical thinker that's to the stage of not just simply trashing this, but telling you all of our thought process about how I look at an article like this. And then especially, this is very different from anywhere you're going to hear because I'm going to give you the perspective of a person who has a model of the universe, a physical model, my father and I. So let's take a look at this and let's dissect this together. This is pretty fun. Okay, let's read it. When you throw certain elements together like hydrogen or oxygen, they, be, they can bond in pairs or even trefles forming O2 or O3, for instance. Shine two flashlights together, however, crickets. The photons simply pass through each other like phantoms and there's no reaction whatsoever. That's because they have no mass or charge, though they can become highly energized in the form of X-rays or gamma rays. Now, I mean, let's take some criticisms first here. I mean, obviously, let's take a look at the, the uh, we'll start with the title, and that is, uh, could power in the next gen quantum computers. That's their justification for doing all these kinds of things, even if their models are inadequate to describe what they're doing, and that leads them to ridiculous conclusions, which is what a lot of us outside the mainstream think. Let's just look at some of these things where you can see that they don't have a model for the fundamentals and yet they're talking about all this stuff. And this is why it gets to be very confusing uh, in mainstream. No physical model. Let's take a look at this first uh, part here. The photons simply pass through each other like phantoms and there's no re reaction whatsoever. Does that mean particles? The particles actually flow through each other? Uh, are they waves? Uh, are somehow they're wave particles, whatever? That's unclear. How can you even say or even understand what that, what that means if like the truth is, mainstream has no physical model for it. And for instance, my father and I do. Let's take a look at what we would say here. Photons simply pass through each other. No, what we would say is G1 particles, which happen to be the same particles that are electricity and light and gravity because they all travel at the sea. Well, then they're probably the same particle. Well, if that's the case, photons aren't photons. There are actually groups of G1 particles that come together in waves. So our model, for instance, says that uh, light is like a shower with your massage turned on. Hits your hand. That's light. Gravity is just the force always pushing it. And that's actually, it's pretty intuitive when you start to think about it. So for us to say photons simply pass through each other, no. G1 particles and particle wa waves of G1 particles throw flow through each other they're not very they're very spaced apart you don't need a lot of them in our models so yeah most of the time these things just pass right through each other because they'd be like sending very small comets through solar systems and galaxies the chance of hitting something's pretty small so see the difference my father and i can describe that in a very certain and distinct and very precise way in our model I'm not here pushing my model, folks. I'm giving an example. Uh, Jeff Lee's got a great model. Uh, Bill Lucas has a great model. Uh, other people have great models. Ether models. Borker's got a great model. All of them. This is just one. Just give me an idea. All right, here we go again. That's because photons have no mass or charge. Well, 
let's go to our model. There's no such thing as anything in the world that has doesn't have mass. In charge is something we put pluses and minuses on, and they have magical attractions. I know people out there think that charge is fundamental, but wrong, wrong, wrong. I'll argue that is absolutely true. It is not fundamental. It is something that we imbue upon it. And there are numerous models out there who recognizes and says the attraction has to be a force and that push, force has to be a pushing force. You can't just put pluses and minuses in and magically have them together. So there you go again. Uh, but they, of course, they can become highly energized even though they have no mass or charge. See, very, very confusing. Then the photons get together. The researchers beamed a very... Uh, the researchers beamed a very weak laser through the den a dense cloud of rub uh, uh, rubidium atoms cooled to a hair uh, to a hair above absolute zero. And instead of exitly ran ran uh, randomly one at a time, instead of exiting randomly one at a time, as you'd expect, they bound together in pairs of triplets, creating some form of an entanglement. Now, and of course, if you go down further down, 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 down. This entanglement, of course, would be able to, um, let's see, having multiple photons entangled would allow much more robust, powerful systems. This interaction of inter in individual photons uh, has been that they can, they said something about a long distance. Here it is. The photon triplets are essentially entangled, so they could be used to, to in uh, qubit processes or, or for transmitting information over long distances. Now let's talk about entanglement here. Entanglement is this idea that two particles know of each other at long distances. So if it's spinning a half spin, if it's doing a half spin, <laughs> thanks dad, I love this. It's doing a half spin. Okay, folks, yes, there is half spin in the particle model. If they're doing a half spin over here, then over here where you can't see my hand, ah, hit my head those two things will instantly know about each other and that's what's entanglement where does entanglement come from where do all these come things from come from where does it says well when they come together instead of going at the regular 880 186,000 miles per second they're moving at 100,000 times slower which is about less than the tesla roadster is, is moving at the moment by my calculations so you know of course you can do these calculations 100,000 times slower. What are fo look, at the, look at all the problems you have here. You, you don't even know why things travel. You have a model which, does, which says you don't know why things travel at a certain speed. So you just say what happens, what you think and what you've seen. Um, you put like a big, you know, I don't know, Dar I guess this is, um, what's his name from Star Wars? My daughter loves this guy. It's the bad guy, you know, and there, there it is. There's this, you know, this is all, of course, to sell into for us to read this in, in gadget.com. But if you go through again, this whole, this whole article, you know, the heft here, the heftier photon molecules, folks, you don't have a model. It's a wave. It's a particle. It's magic. This is all this entanglement that goes on. If you put a detector on one of the double slit experiments, it changes from a particle to a wave. None of this, none of this can really be explained until they have a model, which they don't. They say they do, and they just say, the world, the universe is mysterious. It's very complicated. No, it's not. How come my father and I have a particle model that's completely Newtonian? There's no entanglement. There is no quantum mechanics. There's only moving mass, and that's it, and bashing around. That's all we have, and it's working really well. And it even describes the double slit with a detector. I know, Dave, write your book, get your book out, your father and I. It's just one model. I'm sure other models can explain a lot of this stuff too. But it comes down once again to the idea they don't know what light is. They call it a wave and a particle. They start talking about things that they don't have any really interaction. They don't know how these really interact because if you have a physical model, you don't have one of gravity and light and magnetism and all that kind of stuff. All this stuff is just a house of cards built on a house of cards. So it, again, hybrid pol, uh, pol, polaraton. Here we go. Here's another one. However, let's read this. For benefits, for benefits, think computers, not 
them for benefits to think computers, not lightsabers. How did that? How does this happen? When passing through the listless rubidium atoms, the photons pass on some of their energy. How? Energy is a concept. However, because of something called the, the Ryberg blockade, adjacent adjacent atoms can be can't be excited. Uh, excited as much, and the less agitated atom and the photon form a hybrid called a polar, a polariton. Polariton. As the photons skip between polaritons, they interact with each other in ways they normally wouldn't. And some would were were still stuck together when they exited the cloud. This happened slowly on quantum on a quantum scale, but a about a millionth of a second from entry to exit. Again, all I can tell you is there's just no model. I'll give you an example. Well, David, David, what's your model say? Just for interest. Not because it's right, it's just for interest. Well, our model says that G1 particles are electrons, are light, are gravity. They're all traveling at the speed of light. They're the same things. They're just being captured by nucleons. The nucleus get captured and go around. So we have a model, and it can only hold so many. You can only hold so many because only can so you know the force of G two gravity, which would be like nucleus is our suns, and electrons are like the things that go around the sun, and what keeps the sun and all that in orbit in our model are the sun and going up a level where we're at right here are G one particles flying in all directions, and down below at the atomic level we have G two particles in all directions, really small, going C squared. But we have a model for it. So we can use that model, and that model works well. Oh, Dave, have you done anything? Yeah, we explain electrical engineering, electrical components and circuits way better, way more simply, and give it a physicality that makes sense. We, we How circuits work, how hydroelectric, how do we capture, how do we how do hydroelectric uh, and generators, electro, uh, electric motor and electric generators work? All those things. We can describe all kinds of things. We can describe things that aren't solved in mainstream science. Why? Because we have a model. Is it right or wrong? Doesn't matter. That's what we are doing now. That's what the solutions are today. That's what happens when we read these articles. All it shows is loss, loss, loss for the same reason. They have no idea what the physicality of the universe is, and they make arbitrary systems up that suit, suit their need. But the problem is when you're doing dealing with theoretical ph physics and you're not just doing, you know, there's a difference between what they're saying here, these physicists, and what people who are going to tinker with stuff to make quantum, quantum computers. They'll make quantum computers, and if they really do it, all quantum computers mean instead of ones and zeros, you have other states that you can hold. That's all it means. It doesn't mean entanglement. It doesn't mean all this other stuff. That, no. So we just have to be careful. This is what this is how David D. Hilster sees this article. When I see this article, what I think when I go through it, and I think and I hope that gives you an idea of how critical thinkers work today. We're well beyond just the critical stage. We've got our own models, and we're going and we'll look at this. My father and I look at this and say, hmm, maybe we can explain this. Is it interesting enough for us to explain? Maybe not. Why? Well, it could turn out that this particular setup isn't worth our while because it's such a house of cards. They're so far off that how do we know what they're even doing? Let's stick to the stuff that we need to, can't can explain. And they say can win Nobel, Nobel Prizes, like explaining double slit experiments with detectors. So yeah, we look at this. Is there anything interesting to us? No. My judgment on this would be, therefore, this is so many things that we don't know that it's probably just not worth my father and I's effort to go and try to explain what's going on. We have bigger fish to, fish to fry right now, and that is, hey, pay attention to this model. It may give us some really insights on somebody could technically do something with the model we have because it is physical and we have our rules. So remember what I say, don't take my word for it or anybody else's on face. Stay critical, stay thinking. I'm Dave Hilster, your science therapist, going on and on. Remember to subscribe. Remember to subscribe to Particle uh, particle guru Jeff Yee and also Nick of Time. We've got more people come online. Ciao for now.